Welcome to the Australian Hiker Podcast, Australia's longest running hiking podcast, downloaded over three quarters of a million times in 150 countries and providing you with an Australian perspective on all things hiking. We're your hosts, Tim and Jill Savage. This is episode 229 of the Australian Hiker Podcast. And in this week's episode, we continue our series of on-trail recordings from our recent Great Ocean Road trip. We hope you enjoy. Before we get into today's episode, if you'd like to help support Australian Hiker and this podcast, there are a couple of ways that you can help us out. Firstly, by subscribing on your podcast host of choice, so that each episode is available as soon as it's published. And if you have the opportunity, leave us a five-star review. Another way to support us is go to the Australian Hiker website at www.australianhiker.com.au and click on the supporters page and buy us a coffee. You can do a one-off donation or become a monthly supporter. All donations are greatly appreciated and help us to continue producing this podcast and blog. Now let's get on to today's episode. This episode is the second in our series of on-trail recordings from our recent Great Ocean Road Walk. It consists of our thoughts and feelings as we were going on the second half of the trip and also includes an interview with a hiker who we met up with at the end of day two and who finished the trip with us. And if you haven't already done so, we suggest you go back and listen to episodes 227, An Introduction to the Great Ocean Walk, as well as episode 228, which is a series of on-trail recordings from the first half of this trip. This episode starts at the beginning of day four. Good morning. It's 7.57 on Wednesday, the 31st of August. <laughs> That's the thing about going hiking. You forget to what day of the week it is. We are just here at Joanna Creek Inlet, or Joanna Inlet uh, campsite, and we've pretty much packed up. We've just got to put our tent away, last minute toilet stop, uh, and then we're right to head off. Uh, we've got about 13 and a half kilometres to go for today, and uh, according to the maps, no inlet crossings, so it should be a, a slightly easier and slightly drier trip than it was yesterday. We had a bit of rain last night, started at around about 12.30, didn't last very long. We thought, ah, oh, here we go, we're going to get wet tent again. But it stayed pretty dry, so that was good. Uh, this morning, it's cloudy, and that was the forecast for the day. But the wind has certainly died down from uh, from um, yesterday. We're here, you're looking at the inlet that we crossed yesterday. Uh, it's a lot low tide for probably about another half hour. Again, a lot lower. The water isn't coming up anywhere near as far. So uh, doing a, a crossing at this time of the morning would have been really easy. Would have been great, yeah. <laughs> It was interesting, actually. We um, This campsite, as we mentioned, is virtually perched on top of the cliff. We were just back uh, from that on a slightly downhill slope. So even though we could hear the wind overnight, we weren't really being blown about. But having said that, the, the, there was no real moisture on the tent as such, as opposed to yesterday with the rain where it was sopping wet. Um, yeah, so it's looking like a, um, a better day than yesterday, um, so fingers crossed uh, we'll be walking away from the rain and uh, we'll be getting some great views and also some forest views I think today. Okay, we'll just go and pick up our tent and we'll head off. It's five past twelve, uh, we've been going for three and a half hours and we've covered just on 9.4 kilometres. Not the fastest morning this morning. Uh, the first pretty much three kilometres was straight uphill. And while it wasn't overly steep, it certainly uh, wasn't, a, it wasn't a, a mechanism where you could move particularly fast. And from there on, it just went up and down, up and down. And that's what the description in the guidebook says, a lot of ups and downs. Then we got into Otway National Park proper, which is where we are now. And we're just crossing a short section of beach. No inland crossings as such, but more creek crossings. So took the shoes off, crossed over two crossings, uh, just sitting here just at the off-ramp to go around the next beach section. And uh, we're just sort of drying our feet and um, uh, de-leaching myself. I, think I, I don't think I picked up a leech from down here on the beach, but I think I must have picked it up coming down the trail because it was pretty muddy, was slippery, uh, and I'm sure there were leeches all over the bushes we were brushing past. 
Yeah, and that uh, section of the trail down into Melanesia Beach is uh, quite steep and as the description uh, says it's uh, lots of clay and it was lots of wet clay. My shoes were getting bigger uh, as we were walking. Um, Once we got down to the beach, it's just another lovely beach um, and uh, the water crossing wasn't too bad you know you could cross where the waves were coming in or you could do some rock hopping but we thought it was a bit uh, bit slippery so uh, we opted for taking the shoes and socks off. I think with some of these beaches along here this is a lovely little beach I mean there's you can hear the waves in the background it's not overly strong but I probably wouldn't be inclined to swim I mean there's no one here if you get into trouble and a lot of these areas tend to have rips and uh, and currents that aren't always obvious although previous beach which we left Joanna's had a really obvious rip in it if you know what you're looking for but yeah certainly getting you know just sitting on the beach uh, paddling in the ankle deep water sort of thing even in the even in the, uh, the the rivulets or the creeks would be quite nice on a hot summer's day uh, and given it's around about that midday time uh, it's not a bad time to sort of stop and have a bit of a break we thought we'd probably get to the next hut, or the next shelter, or sorry, or the next campground, sorry, uh, at around about one o'clock. But realistically, we've got uh, five and a half kilometres to go, which is probably, call it two hours, uh, which is going to get us there about two o'clock. Not a long day as such, and we'll probably leave, leave lunch until we get there. Uh, not an overly long day, uh, 14 kilometres approximately. Uh, but you know, it's, the weather's been nice, no rain, so it's good to walk without the wet weather gear on. Yeah, it's definitely um, a different experience today um, as, as opposed to yesterday, so uh, enjoying it much more and uh, you, the ability to look up and out is <laughs> a little bit better today. Um, you just Yesterday we just had our head down and we had to keep going. But yeah, some lovely, lovely uh, forests that we've walked through and, uh, you know, down on the beaches. That's always, always a nice place to be. And I um, did wash my face in the creek, which was very refreshing. Um, that was a good, uh, good opportunity after I dried my feet. So, um, yeah, I think uh, this is a nice, nice place to stop. And I think that's the thing we really, it really occurred to us this morning. Every day we've done, and we've done this, we, this is our fourth day. So we've done, uh, this is our sixth section. Every day is different, uh, different vegetation, different landscape. You're seeing different things and doing different things, apart from walking. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's not, not, a matter, not a matter of getting up and saying, I'm more of the same tomorrow. So far, that hasn't been the case. It has been different. So we'll see what the rest of the day is like. Talk to you later on. It's day four, uh, we're just here at Ryan's Den and we've just had dinner in the kitchen shelter and time-wise, uh, I've just got a little fairy wren just hopping around the floor at the moment, time-wise it's 5.46 and we're just about to go to bed because it's getting cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll probably uh, stay awake for a little while as we have been doing but uh, um, nice to get uh, warm and cosy in our little sleeping bags. I've mentioned in one of the, the daily posts about the fairy wrens, there seems to be a, a little uh, a little family of fairy wrens at each of the sites so that seem to follow, work their way through the campsites to see if there's anything edible. And obviously when there's a, a fair amount of hikers using this facility, there's probably more scraps and crumbs on the floor. So you've yeah, got two little female fairy wrens just hopping around my feet at the moment and the male's somewhere about but haven't seen him just yet. Temperature, as I said, it certainly has dropped, and it's probably no colder than it was yesterday. But we're certainly feeling it. I think, particularly after some long days with the hiking, so just had a very filling, warm meal, and we'll be off to bed. Yeah, today's been um, a good day. Uh, we had some lovely weather that uh, lasted um, all day, so that was kind of nice. The, there was a bit of rain in the distance, but it skirted around us and. Uh, I think we've even managed to get some of those socks dry. So, which which will be a good thing because if the forecast is for rain tomorrow, anything sort of two to six millimetres. But again, you know, if we can get that, that's forecast for later in the morning. But we'll see what happens. Tomorrow is another similar sort of distance. I think we've got about thirteen point six kilometres from memory. So um, that should. Although having said that, tomorrow is also designated as the hardest day of the walk as far as terrain is concerned, even though it's not necessarily the longest day we've done so far. 
So it'll be interesting to see what the terrain is like because we are moving away from the coastland and really tomorrow we don't touch on touch the, on the coastland at all. It's all inland. Okay, on well, time to go to bed. Good morning. It's 7.29 on the 1st of September. Uh, we are sitting here in the kitchen shelter. We're packed, ready to go. As soon as we finish this recording, we're off. We went to bed fairly early last night, probably about 6.30, quarter to 7. So, uh, again, a fairly fitful night. I just can't sleep that long. So um, we have been ready to go for a while, at least, uh, at least mentally, uh, just waiting till the sun came up and we could actually do something. The forecast for today was for rain from about mid-morning onwards, uh, but not a lot of rain, so we'll see how that goes. And, and we were a bit surprised. We woke up and we thought, oh, it's a heavily clouded sky, but uh, once the sun got up a bit, there's very it's, it's a light covering of cloud, but otherwise it's a fairly fine sort of day with a bit of wind. Yeah, we're heading to uh, Devil's Kitchen today, so that's... Uh about 13 to 13.5 kilometres um, and today is considered to be the hardest of the trip. Uh, we're guessing that means there'll be uh, more up and down like there was yesterday. Um, yesterday uh, was moderate rather than hard so we'll see what the difference is today and um, you know we'll be taking the inland route and um, enjoying the national park. One thing this camp has, it's very similar to all the other camps. The campsites are a bit muddy, or well, not muddy, but they're just bare soil. So if it has been raining, they can be a bit muddy. The toilet has a window like the previous one, but the window is when you're sitting on the toilet, you're looking straight out the window. Uh, so it's uh, a bit of a view, a loo with a view. One, a view with a loo. view with a loo, yeah. <laughs> one thing that uh, we learned, and I estimated the gas pretty much spot on except we ended up having some extra drinks uh, and that's killed us for tonight's meal we've got no gas thankfully there is another person here so i'm sure we can scrounge some hot water off them um, because we've got the backcountry mexican meal for dinner and i love this meal it really is nice it's not great with cold water though yeah we have done that before um, it was a, a little bit warmer so it was barely tolerable but it's not great cold <laughs> <laughs> no but with hot water it is a spectacular meal it's one of one of one of my favorites okay we are going to head off uh, and we'll see how we go through the day it's 251 uh, day five, Thursday the 1st of September, and we're here at Devil's Kitchen Campground. We arrived roughly around about just after 12.30, so in total five hours, and today was scheduled to be a hard day, but in all honesty, I don't think it was any harder than yesterday, and partly because yesterday's trip uh, had probably just as much ups and downs, but it had a lot more mud. So today's trip, we had less mud that was around. I think for us so far, we've still got tomorrow's uh, last day to go, but I think for both of us, today was probably the, the best of the, uh, the trip. Mainly, not so much because of the, the steep up and down sections, but because we kept on changing vegetative landscapes. So we went through different types of forests, different types of heathlands, and it was almost in, in one instance we came off a farm property and back into the bushland again, and it was a totally different vegetation in a matter of metres uh, you know, over the fence line. So interesting uh, and a steady incline in most cases today. Yeah, I, I think for me today was um, my favourite um, uh, weaving through the uh, the different types of vegetation that Tim was mentioning, and um, you know the, the the climb at the beginning. I think uh, we were wondering, oh my goodness, is it all going to be like this? Uh, but then it started to even out a little bit and was much more undulating. Um, so there were ups and downs, um, but it was interesting. We took lots of photos. The probably the end of the season for the fungi, but still got plenty of picks in. Today we've, we've pretty much uh, got here to the campsite, uh, set up uh, our tent uh, just in case it did rain because it was forecast for rain today. It was sunny probably up until around about half an hour ago and now the cloud cover's coming in. But it's still quite pleasant and, and relatively warm compared to what it has been over the last few days. 
This campsite very much the same as the others with the um, the kitchen shelter, set of toilets, water tanks. But in the case here, the kitchen shelter has actually got a a stone paved floor uh, as opposed to sand or dirt like the other ones do. So this is probably the best in that respect. The toilet is probably the best, even though they're identical apart from the number of steps on them or whether they've got a ramp. Uh, in this case here, you're sitting on the toilet and you're looking out the window at the ocean. So I don't know whether that's deliberate, that they've, they've improved the view of each toilet as you move along, uh, but certainly this is the best one through here. So as I said, you're looking straight out to the ocean and seeing what's going on with the weather. Yeah, and there are about eight uh, campsites here and, you know, they're... In in uh, some are in open um, ground near the kitchen. Others are quite um, secluded and private. Um, and there's one really, really, really nice one which um, has a little path on the way to a small bench and a, a lookout down onto the the beach, which is the same view that you get from the toilet. But they are a very long way apart. Okay, uh, I think that's us for the moment. As per usual, dinner time tends to be around about the 5.30ish sort of mark. And tomorrow we have our last day. It was a bit confusing about how much distance we had to cover, partly because they talk about day walkers and people doing the entire walk itself. And if you're doing the day walk, basically you're starting from a different location. You're starting from a car park and going all the way through. With our case through here, we're already at the campground, so we've got approximately 15.2 kilometres to take us back to the visit, visitor centre. And then we've got a three-kilometre walk up the road to our hotel, where our car has been parked for the last uh, five or six days. And that supposedly is an easy walk. And looking at the uh, the elevation profile for the walk, it's relatively flat compared to what it has been over the last four or five days. So should be a quickish sort of day. I think they're saying five to six hours yeah. comfortably to get there. So if we leave at, say, 7.30, we're basically going to get there at um, sort of one thirty ish and then we've got another hour walk on the, up to the, uh, the hotel. So, And I'm sure we'll grab something to drink and eat while we're at the, uh, the information centre as well. Yeah, it looks very much uh, like Heath um, that we'll be walking through. Um, uh, they they talk about the you know being on top of the sand dunes and so on. So we'll we'll see how we go. And uh, but I'm expecting it to be quite different to what we've seen today. Okay, we'll talk to you later. Good evening. It's day five of our Great Ocean Walk adventure. And it's the 1st of September and it's 5.33. We're here at Devil's Kitchen uh, Hut or campground. And we're talking to another hiker who we caught up with on day uh, section four, which was our second day, but their fourth day of the hike. Uh, and that was when we were doing double sections, uh, and then from then on we were doing the same thing. We were doing a single section a day. So really, um, in the, the camp each night, there's been three of us. So we just thought we'd have a bit of a chat and see what they thought about this trail. So if you'd just like to introduce yourself, tell us where you're from and why you decided to do this track. Okay, very well. Uh, my name is Maartje. I come from Belgium, from the, the Dutch-speaking part. Um, I'm doing this trail because um, somewhere in my research about Australia, I've seen this advertised as one of the most popular and most beautiful walks. And since I don't have a car to uh, cross the Great Ocean Road, I thought, like, why not hike it? Um, and so far, I've been very happy that I made this decision. All right, so uh, you've still got one day to go, and um, I think for you tomorrow, you, you've you got about 11 kilometres left to finish. So uh, ignoring what may happen tomorrow, what's been the highlight of the trip for you so far? I think for me, because I'm not Australian, um, just uh, uh, meetings with the wildlife, I've seen uh, uh, several um koalas, a uh, few kangaroos and wallabies, uh, lots of beautiful birds that are not native, they're not known to me. So these are, and this, and the great ocean views, of course, these have been my highlights from this trip. Okay, and has there been anything you haven't really liked about this trip? Um, sometimes the um, inlet crossings, because um, not being familiar with 
this, um, it was very difficult for me to estimate the difficulty of uh, crossing them. So, for example, at Parker Inlet, I was completely surprised. I couldn't wait through because I'm also not uh, not too tall. So this this was difficult. But luckily, I um, always found few uh, generous people to help me in this uh, in these occasions. So that was nice. <laughs> All right, and from your perspective, you know, if if you had other people that you knew, would you recommend this as a trip worth doing? Worth doing? Yes, I would definitely recommend it. To European hikers, I would maybe say like choose a few days because if people are on a time limit, maybe eight days can be very long. So then I would definitely recommend today because this has the most variety. Um, yeah, but it has been a great walk. Okay. Um, now, early on when we first met, you said you, you, you thought there'd be more people on this trail. Uh, and really, I mean, there, there could be people ahead of us. There could be people behind us. We're just not sure. But at the moment, there's three of us traveling together doing the same sort of uh, uh, campsites for the last half of the trail. Were you expecting to see more people on this trail? Yeah, definitely, especially because it was advertised as uh, being – very very popular so i just thought like okay every day there will be multiple people uh, staying at the campsites and uh, the first three uh, days and nights i uh, was on my own uh, which was uh, quite surprising for me <laughs> Yeah, I think it's it's one of those sort of things. I mean, August and early September is the wettest time of the year. It's a bit cool at the moment. It's not not as certainly as cold as it can be in in some of the the colder parts of Australia. But I think a lot of people would probably aim at doing this walk through the the warmer months of the year. But in some respects, having that quietness and solitude is not a bad thing if you don't mind being alone. No, I definitely didn't mind being alone because of. Uh, the, that I had more opportunities to see wildlife. Um, as well as for me, I don't think the temperatures were too cold. The lack of snakes was also very surprising, but a very good addition to uh, walking at this time. So yeah, as well for the timing, I would also definitely recommend it. Okay, that's great. So we've been talking to Macha from Belgium. Um, thanks very much for your time. You're welcome. <laughs> Good evening. It's 1st of September, it's 6.27 and day 5 on our Great Ocean Walk adventure. Uh, and this is our last night on the trail. So we're here at Devil's Kitchen. Um, I'm not quite sure where it got that name from or what it means. Uh, but it's very similar to all the other campsites we've been at. Um, except that the ocean view from the toilet is probably the most spectacular out of all the toilets we've been through. Yeah, definitely um, a well-placed window um, in the toilet and uh, you could not get a better view. It's just stunning. So we have just gone to bed just a couple of minutes ago. So from t tomorrow's perspective, we are supposed to have 15.2 kilometres. Kilometers, 15.4 kilometers, uh, and then barring any issues or any changes, we've got a three kilometer walk to our, our motel, which is uh, fairly close or three kilometers close to the information center. So we'll just walk up the road from there. So it gives us an overall distance of roughly 18 and a half kilometers. The plan is to finish off or leave here at around about 7 30 in the morning, uh, and then. Um, it's supposed to be an easy walk tomorrow, and I think by easy they mean uh, we don't have a lot of up and down hills. I think we're walking along the top of the cliff, uh, cliff face, which is fairly stable, and looking at the uh, the um, elevation chart, uh, I think you know, the highest elevation is about 108 and the lowest elevation is around about 50, uh, so there's not a huge distance uh, up and down to, to make it a, a gruelling sort of track. So they estimate five to six hours travel time. And if we call it, say, seven hours to get to the motel, uh, that's not too bad a day. So um, we're in our sleeping bags at the moment. We've had dinner. Um, it's turned quite cool, so um, desperately trying to warm up at the moment. And we've also had a shower, so um, uh, not sure whether or not that will pass through and what we'll have tomorrow. Um, we did have some light sprinkling of rain uh, 
earlier in the day um, and then mostly a sunny day, which was, you know, great um, and perhaps not what we were expecting. Um, so fingers crossed this will clear and uh, we'll have a, a lovely final day for walking. Okay, good night. It's 7.21 on Friday the 2nd of September, uh, our last day, day six, on the Great Ocean Walk. And according to the signage that I'm staring at at the moment is 15.4 kilometres to the 12 Apostles. And then on top of that, we've got a three kilometre walk up to up the road to our hotel on a, a relatively a slight gradient road, but it's a good road. So... Uh, realistically, I'd say we've probably got about seven hours of walking all up. It's 7.20 now, so we'll leave at 7.30 after we've done this recording. So realistically, we'll get there by about 2.30-ish at the latest. Long night last night. Uh, I think we probably went to bed slightly earlier than we normally do, but it was just uh, uh, a very long night. It kept it on was, waking up. It was warmer. T- <laughs> That's why we went to bed. Yeah. Um, didn't think that we'd fall asleep so quickly, Um but yeah, I woke up just before midnight and thought, oh, is it must be morning. <laughs> Had a couple of showers on and off, including this morning, and we were just in here having breakfast, and I just, just missed the rain shower, which was fairly short, but it was enough to wet the rain flies. So had I been a couple of minutes quicker, uh, could have got the whole tent out of the, out of the rain. As it was, I got the, the tent into the shelter, uh, left the pegs there for later, and um, got most of the water or avoided most of the water but the fly was still wet today is supposed to be an easy walk and the only reason i can think of for that is yesterday we were walking up over hills down into valleys up over hills down into valleys and i think why this is classed as easier and i'll soon find out is i think we're walking along cliff top and we're making our way towards the 12 apostles so I know from having visited the Apostles before that uh, certainly the cliff top around that area is fairly flat, so I'm assuming it's going to be the same once we get out of this valley we're in at the moment. Uh, well, I'm guessing we'll be up on flat area, but we'll soon see. It's a bit blowy today too, so um, I'm expecting it to be um, a bit of a windblown day. The the wind is up. Um, the, the rain stopped for now, but... Uh, uh, there are patches of blue sky, but uh, maybe not heading our way. Okay, and we'll just do our final pack and we'll head off. It's 11.07 and it might be a bit windy. Uh, certainly it is where we're talking, so we'll see how the sound comes out. Uh, we've been going for 3 hours and 38 minutes and we've done just on 12 kilometres. So we've got approximately 4 kilometres to go. Three and a half to four kilometres to go to the Twelve Apostles and the end of the trail at the information centre. Uh, and by the look of it, we'll probably end up having some food there before we walk up the road to our motel. Today was classed as easy. Um, I'd say it's easier than a lot of the walks we've done. I'd probably still class it as moderate, more from a distance point of view. A few muddy trails here and there, uh, but overall pretty good. Keeping in touch with the coastline. And where we're sitting at the moment, really strategically placed seat. Apart from the hedge is slightly high. Um, we can see <laughs> we can see we can see the twelve apostles. Yeah, so it has been a relatively um, easy walk in. Um, it is long, um, but it's uh, undulating and weaves in a, in and out through the uh, the heathland. Um, so it's a little bit of a um, I guess it's a little bit like a garden walk in a way um, and uh, you know quite pleasant always with the sea uh, to the left and you can hear it pounding away uh, in the background there but um, yeah we've uh, walked through all sorts of dif- different vegetation today so um, um, the rain has eased up and uh, hopefully by the time uh, we get to the Twelve Apostles it will have uh, completely moved inland um, but again we'll see we, we're sort of taking the uh, rain gear on and off all the time at the moment um, we've got it off and fingers crossed we won't have to put it back on again okay we'll head off this should be the last recording before we finish our trip 
It's 12.30 and we're at the 12 Apostles Visitor Centre and the trip is done and dusted. We spent probably about an hour to an hour and a half on from where we did the last recording. Uh, and I must admit, we weren't quite sure how we got to the visitor centre. We knew that we did eventually get across the road somehow. And I did have a vague recollection from a number of years ago of there being a tunnel under the road. And that's exactly what we did. So we went underneath the road and spent about one and a bit kilometres walking through the bush uh, to get to the, the back of the visitor centre. And that's where we sort of finished off. We had a light lunch a couple of sausage rolls and some some drink and a and an ice cream and that was pretty much us for the trip. Yeah, so we finished um the walk officially at Gibson's steps and there's a little bit of a um uh a platform there and a great view of the 12 apostles and um the the sort of uh signage for the great ocean walk. Um, and then uh, we went on from there towards um, a lookout area um, and then found the um, walkway that takes you under the road. And I must admit, it's, it's, I was saying to Tim that the, it's kind of weird that you do 110 kilometres in all sorts of different con- conditions and the thing that you, you think about is how am I going to get across a busy road? Um, but anyway, you don't have to worry about that because you go under the road. So, you know, f- we just followed the arrows. Uh, we weren't quite sure where we would end up. We were heading in kind of the direction that we wanted to go. And lo and behold, there we were. So, um, you know, we had a mostly good afternoon um, in terms of our weather. Um, it was pretty windy, but uh, the sun was out mostly. Um, and yeah, it was a great end to a great walk okay so that was the end of this trip we'll have one more uh, recording on our way home tomorrow and that will finish up this trip overall It's Saturday 3rd of uh, September and we're around about halfway home or a bit over halfway home heading from uh, southern Victoria back to Canberra. Worked out pretty well. We had a day up our sleeve in case anything went wrong but didn't need it. Uh, So the trip on the Great Ocean Walk is all done and dusted Uh, and now we're just heading back home and a bit of washing to do, a bit of gear to sort out. Um, but yeah, everything went well, and uh, we just have the write-ups and the social media to do now. Yeah, so um, it seems like a long time ago, but it was just yesterday. But uh, when we were packing the car and putting all our dirty gear into a tub, um, ready for the big wash, um, it really was a bit smelly, um, partly from the mud and partly from the sweat. Um, But, yeah, great sense of achievement. So um, missing that beautiful um, dynamic coastline uh, already. Okay, so gear washing time tomorrow and then we start preparing and writing up the podcast. So that was the second of our on-trail recordings from our Great Ocean Road Walk. In next episode, episode 230, we'll go through and discuss reality versus expectations, how we found the trip actually panned out to what we expected, as well as going through and making a series of recommendations about how you can get the best out of a trip that you possibly are planning on this hike. That's all for this week. Bye for now.